Welcome to Evolution. My name is Andre Lawrence. It's freezing and snowing, and this is my channel about the transition from gas-powered cars to electric cars from the perspective of a first-time EV owner. Before getting my electric car, I knew what charging an electric car was about in theory. I had absolutely zero practice. I was quite well informed because I had been reading and watching videos on a daily basis for several years. The one thing that was missing was the practical experience. Lots of people say charging your car is just a question of plugging it in and just like your cell phone, it charges. But there are differences to charging an electric car compared to a cell phone. And if you wanna know what those differences are, stick around and I'll let you know in 10 seconds. What's the difference between plugging in your electric car and letting it charge overnight, which is the same thing that you do with your cell phone? Well, that really is a question of where you are and what you're going to be doing. If you're at home, yes, absolutely. Plugging in your electric car is very simple. You take the wire and take the charger cord, stick it in your car, walk away, and you're done. There are some added things that you can do, especially if you have a smart charger like the Flow X5 that I have right here. The Flow X5 is a smart charger and there's some extra benefits to having a smart charger, but I'll talk about that a little later. But if you've got a regular charger and you plug in your car, you let it charge overnight, you leave in the morning, your car is full. That's exactly the same as with a cell phone. The differences end up in when you have a public charger. I had previously never charged on a public charger and I had no clue how to do it because, well, I never had an electric car to try it. And it's very similar but there are little differences, and I'll show you what those differences are in a segment that's coming up very shortly. Something that wasn't surprising to me is the fact that not many people know how to plug in an electric car and charge it, whether it's at home or in a public charging station. What did surprise me is the number of people that have no clue about how to do it and have lots of questions. Well, for those of you who have no idea how to plug in an electric car, this is my wife's car, and I'll show you how to plug it in when you're at a private charging station at home. But essentially, you have a charge port on the front of this car that slides open when you press a button on the inside, which is why I've already got it open. Take the charge pistol off of the charger. This is what the pistol looks like. It's got a button to release it. Open the little charge flap, line up the pistol, push it in, and you're done. It's as simple as that. So when you get home and your car is near empty or halfway or whatever level you feel you need the charge, plug it in, walk away. The lights on the dash show that the car is charging. The third light is the one that's flashing because the car is already at about 80%. And the charging station changes the color of the light to indicate that it's charging. This being a smart charger, I also have a web page that I can access to see what's going on. And I've got an app as well. So what about the next day when you're done charging your car and you're ready to leave? It's quite simple. This car has an auto locking mechanism and it also locks when you lock the doors of the car. So you start by unlocking the doors, which is done in this case. Pull out the pistol by pressing the button and pulling on it. Wrap up the wire on your charger, insert the pistol, you're done. All you have to do is close the flaps, close the charge port door, and drive away. It's as simple as that. Now one of the advantages of having an electric car versus a gas powered car is that you plug it in at home, you never have to go to a gas station, you finish your day, get home, plug it in, and the next day you're fully charged or a couple hours later depending on what your battery level is when you plug it in. And the amount of time that you save by not going to the gas station during the week can be huge. Now if you drive 20, 30, 40,000 kilometers a year with a gas powered car, you're at a gas station two, three, four times a week, spending time filling up, paying at the pump, or going in and paying. And it's a huge time consuming thing, and it also requires you leaving your house and going if you forgot to fill up on the way home, which has happened to me on more than one occasion in the past. So having the electric car and the ability to just arrive, plug it in, and be full the next day is fantastic. And this is one of the benefits that people don't think about when they talk about road trips. When you talk about a road trip that's longer than the battery capacity of your car, one of the things that comes up is, yeah, but you know what, your electric car, you have to sit at a public charger for an hour or 45 minutes and you're wasting all this time instead of sticking in gas and leaving five minutes later. Well, I'd like to swap that around a little bit and say, how much time do you spend filling up your car during the week? This includes going to the gas station, 
filling up, paying, and then coming back home. The number of times that you have to do that during the week adds up in a 52 week year. So for the odd road trip that you'll be doing that'll be more than the capacity of a battery and that you have to park at a public charger and charge longer than it would be to fill up your car, there are a couple other things to consider. On a long road trip, let's say a thousand kilometers, in a gas powered car, first of all, you're not gonna drive 1000 kilometers straight, you're gonna have to stop for gas. There's also the fact that you're not gonna drive for hours and hours on end without stopping, at least for a pee break. So what that means is with your electric car, you'll end up taking your break, grabbing your snack or your lunch and charging at the same time. So is it that much difference? Well, yeah, it requires a little bit of planning, but there are some great tools that help you plan those road trips. And honestly, I've done a 1,110 kilometer road trip with my wife in my Nero EV, and it was done seamlessly. There are public charges everywhere in the province of Quebec, which is a huge advantage for us. And I was able to make my long road trip without really deviating from what I would have normally done. I drove and on the way there, we had to stop and grab lunch, plugged in my car, let it charge for 20 minutes while I was eating lunch, and I actually finished charging before I was finished eating lunch. And then we just continued on our way. So does it really change the way you drive on a long road trip? A little bit, but if you use a website called A Better Route Planner, it'll help you by telling you where to stop to get your charge, how long and what percentage you need to charge your car to so that you can get to your next charging station. I'll put a link to the website below so that you can use that for your future road trip. What's the difference between plugging in at home and plugging in in a public charger? Well, there are numerous differences, and I'll show you what those are in a second. What's it like to plug this car in and charge on a quick charger? How hard is it? Is it easy or is it difficult? Well, there are two ways to look at this. With the circuit electric charging stations, which are spread across the province in huge numbers, it's quite simple. You can use the app that's on your cell phone, and I'll put a picture of that up somewhere here to show you what it looks like. But essentially, when you open the app, it shows you all of the charging stations that are around you. And all you have to do is look at the charging station, pick the identification number that's on the station, tap on it, and click Start Charge. It'll tell you to plug in your car, and you press the Start button, and you're done. You walk away. That's the hard way. The easy way, and honestly, a safer way to do it, because I did have a situation where I arrived at a charger, I looked at the app, and it said State Unknown. Now, status unknown or state unknown made it so that I wasn't able to press start my charge in the app. So what do you do in that situation? Well, the easier way is to have one of these. This is the Circuit Electric charging card, and it's associated to the app, which is associated to your credit card, which takes the money off whenever you charge your card. And with this, it's much easier. All you have to do is walk up to the charging station. You don't need to know what the ID of the station is. It's irrelevant. All you have to do is take your card and it says that it's authenticating and it's ready to go. Then it's just a matter of taking out the charger and plugging it into your car and the charge will start. So let me show you how it's done to charge your car with a quick charger in Quebec on the Circuit Electric Charger or the Level 3 Charger. It's going to be equivalent with something like a charge point or an Ionity, depending on where you are, as long as it's a level three, it's going to function in a very similar manner. There may be differences with the charge card or the application that are very slight, but in general, everything that I've seen so far between different manufacturers of charging stations, they all work in a very similar fashion, almost identical. Have your card handy, plug in your car, Once you've plugged in your car, the charging station will communicate with it to see what it requires, and it then asks for your card. Simply tap it to the screen, it authenticates, and then says press the start button. That's it, I'm now done. All I have to do is go grab a snack for 20 minutes and my car will be full. Now, one of the really cool things is once your car is connected and charging on the app from the manufacturer of the charging station, there is a completely detailed report of what's going on live, as well as notifications for when the car reaches full charge. This is quite convenient so that when you do reach full charge, you can quickly come out, disconnect your car, and move it away. 
There is a law in Quebec that says that if you are parked in an EV charging station spot, unless you're plugged in and charging, you will get ticketed and possibly towed. One of the really nice things is that in the province of Quebec, our electricity comes from Hydro-Quebec, which is almost entirely renewable energy. So we have a huge advantage driving an electric car here for the fact that the cost of electricity is inexpensive, we have a lot of it, and that it's very clean, making an electric car that much cleaner. So what does it cost to charge your car on a level three charger? It's quite inexpensive. It's 11.50 an hour, it's charged by the minute, and that means that going from 20 to 80% can cost $8 approximately Canadian. So in the end, driving on a long road trip will cost you peanuts, even if you're charging on a level three charger, which costs more. So what about when your car is finished charging? Well, if the car's reached its charge limit, the charger will have stopped charging, and all you have to do is pull the plug and reinsert it into its dock. The other way to do it is if you want it to leave before the end of your charging session, it's quite simple. Press and hold the stop button for a second. It'll indicate that the session has stopped. It'll indicate how much that it cost you for that charging session on the screen, as well as on the app on your cell phone. And then it's just a matter of disconnecting the charger, putting it back in its dock, and you're ready to go once you've closed the port on your car. In the public charging networks, you're going to find two kinds of chargers. There's the level three quick charger, which I showed you earlier. That charges your car from 20 to 80%, depending on the make, model, battery size of your car. But in my case, with the 2019 Kia Niro EV, from 20 to 80% in about 54 minutes. In my experience in a real life situation, I actually got more than that in a shorter amount of time. So it really depends on the power of the level three charger that you have. Here we've got a level two charger, so it's much different than what I showed you earlier. It's a much smaller device, and in the Citri Electric's case, they lock the handle. There's no way to get it out unless you use your card or unless you use the app to unlock it. But it's just as easy as with the level three charger. You take your card, you tap, it will authenticate and then unlock the handle so that you can take it out and plug it into your car. It's as simple as that. And the nice thing is that the app that you use on the level three charger is the same app that you use for level two. So you get your live notifications and you see where your car status is with regards to charging on this charger. I forgot to mention something when I was recording in front of the level three public charger, and it's a common courtesy practice that all EV owners should follow. And that is stopping charging your car at 80%. Now there are a few reasons why you would do this. And the first thing is, charging from 80 to 100% takes considerably longer than charging from 20 to 80%. And that's just due to the way electric batteries work and how they charge resistance, heat, and all of that. And that means that liberating the charger for someone else who may need the charger more than you because you've already got 80% is just a nice thing to do. And the other thing is that it costs a lot more money to charge from 80 to 100% than it does from 20 to 80 because of that extra time. So it's just a huge waste of money. Ideally, if you're gonna be spending a lot of time somewhere, you use the level three charger to get to 80%, then move your car to a slower level two charger. It'll be far less expensive to just leave the car there for a few hours and let it finish charging to 100%. If you missed the post that I put in the community section of my channel, I was able to reach my 1,000 subscriber goal on October 30th, and I'd like to say a huge thank you to everybody who has subscribed so far. It is an amazing feat to have reached 1,000 subscribers in such a short amount of time for my little channel just talking about EVs. So thank you so much to everybody. It's very encouraging and makes me want to make more videos. As promised, I picked 10 subscribers at random from the list of the 1,000 subscribers to win a t-shirt the Evolution t-shirt, which looks something like this. And I've got the names here, I'm gonna say them, I hope I don't mangle any of them. I'm gonna also put the name up here on the screen somewhere uh, so that you see your name. Fritz Nolle, Robert Burr, Wally Haggerty, Zolt Robert Zabo, Haikal Ibrahim, M. Dench One, Mark Brennan, 
Joshua Poblano, Philip Neveu, and Kevin Riley. Congratulations, you are the 10 winners of t-shirts, the Evolution logo with the Evolution design on it. And I need you to leave me a comment in the comment section below so that we can get in touch to get the details of how I get these t-shirts to you, as well as finding out what size you need. Well, in my last video, I didn't really have the time to do the t-shirt quiz, but now is time. Here is the t-shirt quiz. Let me just get that t-shirt on. There you go. If you know what this t-shirt is about, please let me know in the comment section below. Be as specific as possible. And if you're the first person to guess the answer correct, I'll mention you in my next video. Now, let me put that shirt back on. Now that that's all done, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please click the subscribe button and let me know that you like this video by clicking the thumbs up. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions for future videos, please put them in the comment section below. And as always, thanks for watching. I really do appreciate it.